Okay, in this video I'm going to do another example of finding uh, some roots of a complex number. So here we want to find the two square roots of negative 2 root 2 plus 2 root 2i. And again, we're going to use the same formula that we saw um, in a previous video. We'll just use all this big, lovely formula. Um, so the first thing I'm going to have to do is rewrite my number in this polar form. Okay, so here's our complex number. We'll call it z. Um, again, to get our... well, I guess first let's sketch it. So it says we go to the left, negative 2, root 2, and then we go up, positive 2, root 2. So there will be our complex number. Um, a couple things here. So to figure out our r value, we just take each one of these quantities and we square it. So negative 2 root 2 squared plus 2 root 2 squared. Well, let's see. Uh, negative 2 squared is 4. The square root of 2 squared is 2. So 4 times 2 will be 8. Looks like we'll get another 8 over here, uh, which will give us 16. And hey, the square root of 16 is just going to give us 4. We also need to figure out the angle associated uh, with our complex number here. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to figure out the angle. Uh, we'll call it alpha. So again, we went to the left, 2 root 2. Uh, we went up, 2 root 2. So if we use tangent, tangent would be opposite over adjacent. So 2 root 2 over 2 root 2, which is just going to give us 1. So in this case, alpha would be 45 degrees. Well, that means theta would be 180 minus 45 degrees, which would give us 135 degrees. So it says we can really rewrite our, our uh, complex number as our r value, which is 4. And then we'll have cosine of 135 degrees plus i sine of 135 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to use this, um, this polar form, to actually go about finding the, the roots. Okay, so let's see. So again, we want the square roots. So since we're doing square roots, that means we're using n equals 2. And again, we're working with 4 cosine of 135 uh, plus i sine of 135. All right, so now it's just a matter of using our, our nice little formula here. It says to get the roots, it says we'll use, well, the square root of 4. And then it says we'll have cosine of the original angle that we started with, which was 135 degrees, Uh, plus, let's see, uh, so we'll have 360 degrees times k all over our n value. And again, we said our n value is going to be 2 in this case. Plus i sine of 135 degrees plus uh, 360 degrees times k all over our n value, which is 2. Now we have to evaluate this for um, for k equals 0, 1, and again we go up to n minus 1. Well again, if we take n minus 1, that would be in this case 2 minus 1, which is 1. So it says that's going to be our stopping point, is that k equals 1. <clears throat> so now we'll have to simplify these down a little bit more here. Um, let's calculate some things here. So. Okay, so let's do our k equals 0 case. Okay, so I'm going to plug k equals 0 here into our formula. So the square root of 4, that's just going to be 2. And then we would get cosine. Well, if we plug in k equals 0, this term will be 0. So we'll be left with 135 degrees over 2 plus i sine of, well, 135 degrees over 2. So that'll be one of our complex numbers. Um, let's see, our second one will be when k equals 1. So when k equals 1, we'll get 2 times cosine of, well, if 
k equals 1, we'll get 135 degrees plus 360 degrees all over 2 plus i sine of, well, 135 degrees plus 360 degrees all over 2. And of course, again, we could always uh, just simplify these down a little bit further. So let's, uh, let's do that here. Let's see, so for our k equals 0, well, that's going to be 2 times cosine of, let's see, 135 divided by 2. Um, how about 67.5? Is that 135 divided by 2? Uh, looks good to me. Plus I sine of, well, 67.5. Again, these are in degrees. So we can always plug this into a calculator. Uh, let's see, so if we do 67.5, Cosine of that, I'm getting cosine of 67.5 to be roughly 0.383 after rounding, plus i times sine of 67.5 degrees. So let me get that one. So 67.5 sine of that, I'm getting that to be roughly 0.924 uh, after rounding. Well, so if we distribute the 2.383 times 2, um, I'm getting 0 0.766 plus if we take, well, uh, 0.924 and if we double that, we'll just get 1.848 times i. So that would be one of our roots in this case. Now we just need to go back and do the same thing for our k equals 1. So let's see, uh, k equals 1, I believe this is what we had here, so we've got 2 times cosine of, so let's see, um, 360 and 135, that's going to give us 495 all over 2. We'll get the same thing here for sine, we'll just get 495 over 2. All right, so uh, let's just keep cleaning this up here a little bit. So 495 divided by 2, um, so 495 divided by 2, that's just going to give us 247.5 degrees plus I times sine of 247.5 degrees. So let's see, uh, 247.5 degrees, if I plug that into uh, cosine, I'm getting that to be negative uh, 0.383 after rounding, um, plus i times sine of 247.5. Which is going to give us just the, uh, so notice we're just getting the negatives of the values. I think we had a second ago. So negative uh, 9.24. Okay, and I think those are pretty much the same numbers we had just a second ago. Right, so 0.383 and 0.924. So it looks like when we distribute, we'll get negative, let's see, uh, 0 0.766. Minus, uh, it looks like uh, 1.848 times i. And now we found our other root as well. So, um, so again, you know, a little, a little long. You just have to know the formula, convert things into polar form. Um, and again, hopefully you don't have to use, you know, uh, a bunch of roots because if you have, if you want a bunch of roots, uh, you know, say. Uh, you know, the tenth roots, you'd have to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up, up to uh, 8, 9. You'd have to finish at 9 if we wanted the tenth root of our complex number. So after that, it's just really a lot of arithmetic to me, just plugging things into the formula and simplifying it down.